Um, good afternoon. It's a real, real pleasure and honor for me to be here. I'm not Rachel Kite. She profusely apologizes. There was a last minute event with the president and she, she couldn't make it. I'm Gita Sethi. I'm the manager for the Global Agriculture and Food Security Program in the World Bank. And I am going to try and do my best to do justice to Rachel's uh, talking points. Um, one year ago, many of us were in Rio in grappling with how better to connect the dots between agriculture, water, forests, food security, and eradicating poverty. One stark reality became clear. We can't achieve global food security without preserving our ecosystems, services that forests provide, and we can't sustain forests without thinking of how we will feed a growing population. And we can't grow food without water. It's all connected. What's clear is the traditional development approaches, which Peter also laid out, which are often sector by sector and limited to one land use at a time, has, is struggling to produce lasting results. And they will do so even more uh, with the climate change posing additional uncertainties. Last week, we, we at the World Bank launched a new report which laid out the dire consequences of two uh, Celsius warmer planet. We might see this happen in our own lifetime. We need to factor climate change into all our actions on agriculture, water, forests, etc. Most of us now see landscape approaches as needed to promote sustainable development, intensification of food production systems. It is also when, when agriculture is viewed in relation to other land uses within the broader landscape that the need for more crop per drop of land becomes apparent, thus creating a demand for production systems that can achieve this. Taking a landscape view on productive activities can also lead to better risk management, and we can, we can turn the opportunities for income diversification and risk pooling. So how does all of this relate to forests, and where do we go from here? Forests cannot be sustained if people are hungry or the governance of natural resources is inadequate. Issues of poverty, food security, and access to energy are intricately linked and should be an integral part of how we support sustainable development. Food security is a perfect example. Hunger places a direct burden on forests when people are forced to push deeper into forested areas to grow crops. Hunger and poverty again take a toll when people resort to making and selling charcoal faster than the natural rate of forest regeneration in order to buy food. You can try to ring fence forests or try to ban charcoal, but unless issues of access to land, crop productivity, energy affordability, and livelihoods are addressed, our best efforts will be in vain. A full-fledged landscape approach will consider both natural resources and communities together. A leading principle is that protecting natural resources can only be successful if it provides tangible benefits to individual households and communities through enhanced agricultural productivity, food security, and incomes, while sustaining and enhancing a natural capital base of the landscape. We at the World Bank are looking beyond the forest to consider the potential of trees in the landscape to generate climate smart solutions by incorporating trees, forests, woodlands into farming systems, uh, protect forests and other critical natural habitats. Let me give you a few examples. On Colombian hillsides, the landscape approach is integrating livestock, trees, and range of crops, depending on the slopes of the land and direction of the streams to increase incomes while conserving the landscape. In China, the World Bank's support to the forest sector resulted in over 3.0 million hectares, around 12% of newly established forests. The increase in forest cover has significantly impacted livelihoods, boosting average annual income by 150% between 1998 and 2004, mitigating greenhouse gas emissions and reduced soil erosion. In Albania, Another World Bank project integrates forest, pastures, and agriculture management, increased incomes by 28% in some areas. 
and brought more than a, a million uh, seven, 775,000 hectares of land under management of local communities. It also led to carbon emissions reduction and protection of important watersheds. Of course, landscape approach will look very different depending on where you are. For Latin America, one of the biggest challenges is tackling the drivers of deforestation, while for Middle East and Northern America, North America, optimizing the management of water resources to ensure food security likely be on top of the agenda. For Africa, addressing land degradation to sustain food production is essential. A sustainable land landscape approach can be seen as a mix of art and science. There is no universal blueprint for its implementation, but a few generic steps that can help us guide the design. The first step is defining the boundaries of the landscape, considering the strengths of interlinkages between land usage and livelihoods in the geographic area of interest and the existence of relevant institutions to, to deal with the problem. Second step would be to aim at defining a long-term shared vision for the landscape through an inclusive and participatory process. Third step would be implementation of long-term vision by setting specific goals and expected outcomes for short and medium term. Last step would be to devise an inclusive monitoring and evaluation framework of landscape interventions to ensure everything's on right track. The World Bank Group is in the process of drafting an action plan on forests and trees in sustainable landscapes. Our approach will integrate the management of forests and trees into a wider set of development priorities and approaches. We're building partnerships, both globally and at country level, to promote integrated landscape solutions to agriculture, rural development, and broader ecosystem management challenges. As just one example, the program on forests is working to mobilize additional investment in trees and landscape restoration in Africa, among many other projects. To be effective, we need to move together towards a jointly agreed development agenda by all the stakeholders in the landscape, public, private, and civil society. Landscape involves waterways, protected areas, farmland, forests, as well as human-made infrastructure for transport and industry. We need to collectively embrace the expertise and experience of different ministries and institutions to strive for synergies and effective coordination. As always, we look forward to advancing this conversation with you. Thank you.